Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's get on right on into this. This is Greg, and this is them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of ground to cover this week. Let's go back over to the book of Exodus, yeah. and I'll show you how you can just pull little verses of Scripture out and make them say something they did not say. Mm. Now, um, look at verse 25. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness from the midst of you. Who's the he? Well, it's God. No, no, it isn't. It's an angel. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we'll verse 20, that. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you into the place where I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. It's the angel that will bless your bread and water. That's right. Now, over in the first chapter of Hebrews, are they not all ministering spirits for the heirs of salvation? So you go into a restaurant and you begin to pray over the meal and you say, Father, thank you very much. We're, we're receiving what we've ordered. Ministering spirits, you go back in there and you make sure that food wasn't dropped on the floor before they put it on my plate yes. and make certain that it's done well and cared for. Because I might have to eat this in a little bit. <laughs> My yeah. angel. Yeah. But Gideon seems to be provoking this angel. He, he's not intending to. But I believe that this angel had been given instruction, Hesed, yeah. with him. Yeah. Because he's got an assignment to do. A fleece is of your senses. Guys, let me help you. It's of your senses. It's not of your spirit. You don't access the will of God that way. No, you don't. Through your senses. There are three voices. Your spirit, your human spirit has a voice, your mind has a voice, mm -hmm. and um, your body has a voice. Yes. Your body's voice is feelings. That's right. Well, I just feel like God heard my prayer. That's the dumbest thing. Oh, I just feel the spirit. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I have people today say, oh, I just want a visitation from the Lord. I want an angel to visit me. Why? You have the greater one living on All the inside right, of you. All right, now you brought it up. <laughs> the first meeting I went on with Brother Roberts was in Memphis, Tennessee. First one. Mm -hmm. So I did not know what the procedures were. I, they didn't tell me much. <laughs> I was finding this out. <clears throat> well, Brother DeWeese had the afternoon service. Then I found out later that a lot of people got healed in those services, but a whole lot of people got baptized in the Spirit. But nobody told me this. Mm. So I just followed him and wound up. There were so many sick people in there, you could smell it. Mm-hmm. It scared me. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a scriptural, predominantly illiterate. I've never seen things like these before. I just went to the exit and went outside. Mm -hmm. I just stood out there kind of trembling. And I heard the Lord say, where are you going? I said, I'm gonna go get a Greyhound bus and I'm going back to Tulsa so they can get that airplane home any way they want to. <clears throat> Why? Well, you know why. He stopped me right then. And on the inside, he said, Kenneth, I could have filled you with an angel. I said, what? He said, what do you think demon-possessed people? They're fallen angelic beings. Mm -hmm. He said, I could have filled you with a mighty angel, mm -hmm. but I didn't trust you with an angel. I filled you with myself. Amen. And you speak my supernatural language. I have called you and anointed you to do something about this. Now it's your choice. Go home or go back in there. Mm 
I stepped through that door and fell alone in love with the miracle deliverance ministry. I couldn't get enough. Let me in there and get my hands on these people. I realized who's in me. That's right. And then I read it in the book. Greater is he in me than he that's in the world. And he's right here. And he talks to me here. Glory to God. He's this close. Yes. He's this close. Romans 8. We started the week with it. Romans 8, mm. for verse 14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's, that's Gideon. Mm-hmm. 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 But you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Beareth witness. Get that. Get it. Bears witness. That's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this this week. Go that ahead. we are the children of God. Then the children heirs, and heirs according to God, joint heirs with Christ. Now, joint heirs with him. Mm-hmm. We're not sub-heirs. Amen. Equal. By Hesed, yes, that's right. We're equal to him. By his blood and his name. Mm-hmm. Well, now, the do, inward witness. How does this work? <clears throat> Let me give you another verse. Proverbs Chapter 20 and verse 27. Yes, You'll sir. know what the minute I start say, say it. Yes, sir. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, yes. searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mm-hmm. The spirit of man, he resides in your spirit. God's never going to speak to your <clears throat> mind because he's not in your mind. He's in your spirit. This is where it's going to come from. It's going to come from your belly. The Lord doesn't communicate with your mind. He's not in my mind. He's in my spirit. He's in my human spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why I said when we started a while ago, there are three voices. The voice of my body, the voice of my mind, will, emotions, or the soulish voice, and the voice of my spirit. Mm -hmm. The voice of my body is feelings. Mm -hmm. The the voice of my mind is intellect, reasoning, reasoning. It'll be like this. This is how you would say it. Well, let's list all the pros and the cons. No, that's right here. Yes. You see, and there's a lot of people that, that only access God right here, mental ascent. But the voice of your spirit, the best way to put it, my human spirit sounds like conscience, my conscience. It'll sound, and now it's learned to train to hear his spirit in my spirit. Uh, a lot of times it'll sound like authority. Have you ever, have you ever heard in here something Brother Copeland said? <laughs> I have. I've heard Brother Hagen right mm-hmm. here. I've heard my own father and mother right mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the Lord speaking to me because yes, I, I, I can prove it with little Samuel. Yeah. He goes running to the prophet Eli, thinking that he called him. Finally, Eli got through. Oh, yeah, well, this Greg, Lord, it sounds the, like authority. The night I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, mm-hmm. you heard. I was born in Lubbock. Then six weeks later, because of my dad's a better job with the same with John's Business College, we moved to Abilene. But we went to the University Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas. That church was connected to Baylor. That's Baylor and and Hardin Simmons mm-hmm. University is mm-hmm. the University Baptist Church, hence. We had, and the, the Baptist Church Sunday School was a whole lot like school. You graduated up in years. Well, Mrs. Taggart was such a good teacher, and she loved us boys, and she just, I mean, she just sit and put up with us. And so there was a handful of us, went to the Sunday School superintendent and told him now, we're, we're, we want Mrs. Taggart as our teacher. Mm-hmm. And, we're, and, and if not, we're just not coming back. So Mrs. Taggart graduated with us. <laughs> so the second day of November, 1962, I came in from a trip 
where I had flown a, an, a, an executive with the Arkansas Louisiana Gas Company. Mm -hmm. You've heard me tell that story here, but they haven't, maybe. I thought it was a day like any other. And, and so I had to wait for him, planned on that. Gloria waited a late until waiting on me, and she was still at the stove when I got home. I went in the bedroom, changed clothes to come out there. I had one shoe on and off, and all of a sudden, just suddenly, I heard it in my spirit. Kenneth, if you don't get right with me, you're headed to a devil's hell, son. Mm -hmm. I said, I know it, because I was raised right. But what do I do now? Now, here's my point. I heard her voice. Yes, I right. I recognized her. Now, we all called her, she called herself Old Lady Taggart. Mm -hmm. We called her that. It wasn't a bit disrespectful. And I, th and I thought, that's Old Lady Taggart. I heard her say, kind of like this, boys, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. That's the last voice of spiritual authority you'd heard. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the point I wanted to make. And I said this to myself, well, this sounds just as dumb as the first time I heard it. <laughs> well, my goodness, I mean, had it been so many years ago, she was still in here. That's my point. She was still in here. Heaven says she won me to the Lord. Hallelujah. You just had your moment of, of how can a man be born again? You know, that sounds just as dumb as the first time I heard it. No, you know. I did it. That moment, I didn't know I was a new creature. I just knew I couldn't close my mouth for about five or six seconds and profanity was gone forever. Yeah, amen. But uh, that's, my, that's my point. Her voice was still in my spirit. It was in my dead spirit. A dead spirit is one that does not have a relationship with God. That's all, that's all. That, that's it. And like we said, hence the term born again. Mm -hmm. And so... Gloria had never heard that term. Mm. She's raising the Church of Christ. They didn't. You, they majored on water baptism, and they didn't use. She'd never heard it, mm. so she didn't know to pray that. She just said, "Take my life and do something with it." Yeah. And then, after when when she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's the first time she heard that term, mm. being born again, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, this new creature, the world calls it a hunch. Because mm. unborn again people can have it. Mm. We call it an inward witness. Mm. Roy Hicks, mm -hmm. overseer of the Foursquare Church, of course he's in heaven now, very close friend of Brother Hagin. I met him and, oh, <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever meet him? I did. Grant? And to visit with him, the man is so brilliant. It is, mm -hmm. I'll just sit there and say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna open my mouth and prove what yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I get mm -hmm. it. Yes, sir, mm-hmm, thank you. He did a research study on people in his church and people that he knew that had had drastic accidents or deaths mm. over the years. Mm. Now listen to me, class. He did not find one single one that did not have a warning witness in their spirit before they did what That's they right. did. That's right. Cost right. some of them their life. That's right. Now, a very close friend of, my, of ours. And... Um, he was, they, they were uh, scheduled on the airline, he and, and some of his people and one of his men in his church. He had an inward witness. No, he said something like, no, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going on this flight. And and he said, no, I'm, no I'm, not, I'm, I'm not gonna go on this flight. No, no, I'm not going on that flight. Mm. 
Well, the man that did died. Now, when Gloria and I were on the airline, we spiritually hijacked that thing every time we got in it. Mm -hmm. But still, if it rose up on the inside of me, uh, you, why don't you go take care of something else? I, I'm gone. Yeah. I will not violate yeah. that. Even if it turned out to be wrong, I'd better be wrong than dead. That's right. And besides that, I'm going to honor that with God because if I don't, I'll get so spiritually dead to his voice. I won't hear it when I need it. That's right. Amen. That inward witness. Mm -hmm. mm. And over the years, one of the men that uh, Brother Hicks talked about, he said, that this man is a member of his church. He and his wife had gone on a trip. And he was trying to hurry her up. Come on and let's get dressed. That, come on. They were just trying to get back home. And so they backed out and left. Just in time, now listen class, listen to me out there. Just in time, just as they, the, a signal light turned green, he took off and a car rammed the right side of their car and killed his wife. Mm. And he said, well, you know, yeah. He said, I kept thinking, why am I in such a hurry? Why am I in such a hurry? I'm just in a hurry. No reason to be. And he said, I kept thinking, well, you know, wait a minute. but he said, I just kept pushing her. Now he had to live with that. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. There were things like that. Just listen to that inward witness. There was a young man He uh, came to one of our services there at uh, Grace Temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was so excited. And he was so thrilled about the things that he had learned and so forth. And he, uh, he left church there one night. There was a a, uh, I think it was a butane truck or something that just rammed into his car. Just rammed into it. Now he had prayed and was very excited about the protection of God. And he prayed that. And so going home from church, that butane truck hit his car and his car burned. Class, suddenly he was standing on the curb there watching his own car burn. And he had the proof of it because he's had his Bible and my book on the laws of prosperity in his Bible and it was, it was up on the dashboard of the car and it didn't burn. And her witness. Had the witness. Don't override it. Never. Never. I don't talk about it much. I get that witness. I will with Gloria. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Now let me give you a good <coughs> inward witness. We were Southwest. I don't remember now who was preaching. I think, I, in my memory, I have Jerry Savelle. I think it probably was. Well, I was sitting back there in the curtain like I always did, listening to everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes I didn't get a chance to listen, to, but I, I'd get all the tapes and then re-listen to them. But anyway, listen to everybody. I was sitting back there and I heard this in my spirit. 
I want you to believe me for a Cessna Citation 10 right now. If I tell you to go to Tokyo in the morning, I don't want you to have to ask someone if you can go. Mm. Well, for at, at that time, that's the fastest civilian jet on the planet. The rest of the manufacturers had to catch up with it. Mm. Suddenly, Gloria popped through the curtain. She'd been out there listening to Jerry preach. She popped through there. She said, Kenneth, the Lord just spoke to me. I said, he just spoke to me. I said, what did he say to you? She said, you first. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, she said, that's exactly what the Lord said with me. We had the inward witness. We sowed the seed. Mm -hmm. See how it works? Yeah. I didn't hear an audible voice. Nope. I've only heard it one time. But it was in here. It was very strong. But you practice the presence of God. That's why you renew your mind. Yes. Paul tells you to renew your and mind. And you listen, so you and you hear. listen, and you listen, and you take the time to take off and pray in the Spirit and uh -huh. get your notebook, and you just sit there. Then you say, Father, give me utterance, please. And you begin to write. And so, well, now, wait a minute. I don't know whether that agrees with the word or not. Well, just put that up on the shelf. See, that's a person, a police person is a person that won't take responsibility to listen mm -hmm. to the Father and find out his thoughts and his will. Last week, you shared about a pastor in Columbia that learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. He spent half the day. Yes. He retrained himself. Most people don't want to wait on him. They want microwave He got answers. up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. Until lunch, his first meal of the day was at noon. Nobody came to his church except the handful of people that helped him start it for 15 years before he heard the Lord say that. And then it got so big that just a few years ago, and our Spanish team went to check it out. He had a convention and had one million people there. You think it was worth it? Yes. The inward witness. The Lord told him what to do. You praise and worship on Sunday. You praise and worship for at least an hour. And I'll do the miracle. Mm. So his Sunday morning process, he obeyed that. And he began to do that and he would, they would praise and worship. That is very scriptural. Yes. We enter into God's praise when we pray, but he enters into ours when we praise. That's it. So, and the miracles begin to happen, and the miracles begin to happen, and the healings and just outlandish things begin to happen. Then what did he do? He, st he gives an invitation first, not after he preaches. Mm -hmm. He didn't get the memo that you're supposed to do it the other way. <laughs> so he got, I was there on two different Sundays. I saw it. He gives an invitation. I packed the front of that church. Mm -hmm. Then after he gave the invitation, then he would preach. Well, then he would have me preach. And, and he said in Spanish, he said, I call Brother Copeland up here and I do this, all I get is faith. <laughs> he said, hey, this is what he said. He said, if I ring him like a rag, all that comes out is faith. Praise God. <laughs> See, he followed what God told him to do. It's not up to you to tell God how to lead you. <laughs> Listen to him and he'll tell you. He may tell you to get up in the morning like that. Yeah. He may tell you to do something else, but be obedient. In this last things. 30 seconds, yes, sir. more than once, more than once, I'll, I'll go. I'll just pray until the scripture comes up on the inside uh -huh. of me. And I go to that scripture and I say, no, here's what you said. This is what you said, because I heard him say, let my word fight its own fight. Yes. Yeah. It is the sword of the spirit. This is what you said, now do it. And we're out of time. We'll be back in just a moment. Do you 
have questions about what's going on in the world, about your future, your family, the direction you should go, no matter the questions and situations you're facing, you can rejoice and be shielded by the peace of God. Get the Family Peace Package, a CD series by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland called Simple Stress Relief Through Thanksgiving and Praise and their book, Family Promises. Start putting God's Word in your heart now concerning your family, marriage, and children. Then when the storms of life come, you can be led by the Spirit of God to know what to do and respond in faith to overcome. Learn to quiet the sounds of the world and receive the answers you need for every situation you face, knowing God is with you. Your praise and worship to the Lord is a weapon that silences the enemy and produces an atmosphere where God's blessing flows. Roll your cares onto Jesus, your caretaker, and live in His peace that passes understanding. Request your copy of the Family Peace Package, free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. Receive the truth of God's Word established in your heart and grow strong in faith. The Family Peace Package is a great gift idea for your friends and family. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. KCBC is where I built a solid faith foundation before I started my career. With our busy schedules, finding a college with a close community and shared values was so important to us. And we found it here. The KCBC, I renewed my identity in Christ. I got a second chance and found my purpose. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a community of family and faith here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Through practical and classroom education, get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry with faith, integrity, and excellence. Get hands-on ministry and outreach opportunities, discover new gifts and talents, and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Now tomorrow we're going to get into life and death situations not things that I think I know, but things I'm a witness. And the reason we do this is so you don't do it. Amen. But until then, God loves you and we love you. That's why we do this. <laughs> why? Because Jesus is Lord, yes. and yes, prayer yes. changes things. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls KCM.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.